they'll, they'll work. Yeah. All right, we're starting. I don't have a lot of time, so I've got to use every second I have. Sorry, Henry, I can't help you. All right. All right, guys, it has to be totally quiet. I really need you guys to focus right now. Up, up until this point, every equation that I gave you had only one variable in it. It had like an x, right? Right? Now suddenly we're talking about two variable equations. Two variable equations. So you're going to have an, usually I like to use x and y, right? It's, they're pretty common and I just like them and they're easy. But sometimes you'll see an m and an n and an o and a, not an o. Hopefully. Um, but you know, anyways. But I'm just going to use x's and y's. Now the thing is, when you had one variable, like this, when you had one variable, x plus 4 equals 10, you could always solve for x. You always knew what x was, right? Always. One variable, one equation, no problem, you can solve it. Watch this. Minus 4 minus 4. x is equal to 6. Even though we didn't know what x was, we could figure out what x was. Now that's different though when you have two variables. Wait, Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, you actually, I don't know why I started doing the, the problem. This is kind of instinctive. But point is, I think you said x plus 4 equals 6. So I get like, uh, uh, I don't know. Oh, sorry. I, maybe I said that. I might have. I have no idea what I said. We'll have to go. You guys have to go watch the video tonight and tell me what I, I don't know. But that, but right, does it make sense? One equation, one variable, no problem. I can solve for that variable. Always. No exceptions. Absolutely no exceptions. But as soon as I put two, equa two variables in with one equation, totally changes the game. If I have y is equal to x plus 1, uh-oh. I don't know what x is, and I don't know what y is. I can't really solve either. I can't solve it because I don't know what they are. I, y is dependent on what x is, right? But I don't know what x is, so I can't figure out why because y is dependent on my knowing what x is. Does that make sense? Yeah. So really, this is important to know. x, well actually, y is the dependent variable. It is dependent on x, right? x is the independent variable dependent variable and you'll see why in a second. Somebody had a question or a hand up? I can't remember. Was it okay? No? Okay. Um, so do you guys understand that I cannot solve for this now? Does it make sense? I don't know what y is. I mean if x were 0, what would y be? 0 plus 1, y would be 1. So it might be 0 and it might be 1, but what if, what if x were 1? What would y be? Two. 1 plus 1 is 2. Oh, oh. so now is it, is it 0 and 1, or is it 1 and 2? Oh my gosh, but x could be 10. And if x was 10, what would y be? Oh my god, this is awful. Right? This is horrible. Absolutely. It's, so what do we have? What we're going to do is we're going to create a line that incorporates all the possibilities. All right? There's a lot of possible answers for x and y here. Does that make sense? Yeah. You get it? We just went through three of them or four of them. I don't know. And so there's a lot of possible answers. So we're going to create a line that shows all the possible answers, or at least represents all the possible answers. And so we're going to use what's called a t-chart. And we're going to do just what we just did verbally just now. We're going to do a t-chart. You draw a big T like this. You put an x here and you put a y here. OK? Oh, I love t-charts. And then you choose, you are the one, since x is the independent variable, right? Independent. It doesn't matter what y is. I mean, x is the one we choose first. We choose um, values for x. And you could choose anything, right? You could choose negative 73 fourths, and you could do positive 2,165,463,222.1, right? And it would work, but it would be really hard to graph, right? So that's not what you do. You choose simple things. Yes, Sebi. Um, 
Can you like put a parenthesis like um by the x and by the one and then solve x minus one and then like minus one and then not really. I mean, you, not really. Because what, what you're going to do here is you're going to actually choose a number for x. You're going to say, okay, if, this is how you're thinking about it, if x were 0. And the first one I always choose is 0. So you can get in the habit of doing this. And the second one I always choose, almost always, is 1. And the third one I always choose is 2. Right? Yes? Last year Matt said that, like, to keep it simple, it should be any number in between 0 and 9. Correct, right? It, you want it to be small, and and so you want it to be fairly small, zero and nine. That's a, that's a good philosophy. Not it won't always work with what I'm going to teach you because I'm going to go beyond what Matt's taught you guys. But it's a good basic idea. Yeah. You want to keep them low because you got to graph it, right? You don't want to suddenly be you know zero one and then suddenly forty three comma forty four and then you got to do 44 notches on your graph, right? You don't want to do that. You want to keep it low. So I, most of the time, I'll put 0, 1, and 2. If there's no fractions up here, always I do 0, 1, and 2. Always. Keep, this, keep it simple, like 0, 1, 0, 1, and 2. All I need is three points. The only thing is, why would I need three points? Because really, technically, don't I just need two points to draw a straight line? Right? Would you agree with me? I just need two points. Um, Why would I ask for three points? Yes, Lila. Center the, and the two ends. Okay. All right. And what is the value of that? That's right. That's totally right. What is the value of that? Right. Okay. What if I graph it? What if I graph something and I put a point here? Let's say I, I did my, my arithmetic here and figured out what my y is. And I play, okay, the one point was here, one point was here, and the other point was here. Because what would that tell me? Then it Lucinda. It wouldn't be right because any two points could be a straight line, but it takes three to make it an absolute. Like, you could have two anywhere, and it would always be a straight line, but if you have three, it actually shows that it has to be right. a perfect straight line. All of these equations that we're going to work on right now are straight lines. So if I have three points, they darn well better be all on the same line, right? Something and if you have a point down here, then suddenly you don't know. Is the line this one, or is it this one, or is it that one? I don't know. So I have to go back to my T-chart and see I made a mistake somewhere, right? i got to see where I made my mistake. So if x were 0, y equals 0 plus 1, what would that equal? 1. one. So y would be 1. I put that 1 here. So that is a coordinate right there. 0, 1. 0, 1 is a coordinate. You don't have to write it out like that because it's right there in your t-chart. 0, 1. Right? And then 1, if, y were, if x were 1, y would be 1 plus 1, which is 2. two. Right? If x were 2, y would be 2 plus 1, which is 3. three. So now I'm going to go graph this. So using my graph, uh-oh, I just realized, am I recording this? I'm recording this. Yes, I am recording this. Okay, <laughs> yes, let me pick up Wait. my eraser. Gary, should, can the camera see you from your that chart over there? Oh, yeah, the camera can't see you from the chart. Uh, you're right. Okay, mm -hmm. but that's it. So we got, so, okay, we, so we have these three coordinates. We have this, this, and this, right? And I'm going to graph this. So here's my graph. Here's my y, here's my x, axes, 0, 1. So I always start at 0, 0, and it says I go nowhere to the right or left, right? Mm -hmm. But it says I go up 1, so here's my 1. So I'm going to put a dot right there, is right? So that's, that's 0 to the left and right, and then 1 up, because it's positive. And then my next one, let me just draw a few marks here so that I have some. Okay, now, then I go back to 0, 0 again. It says I go to the right 1, and I go up 2. To the right one and up two, and I put a dot. And then I then I go back to zero zero and I go to the right two and I go up three. One, two, three. And I put a dot. Now that darn well, those all three dots better be in a straight line. Yeah. Yeah, and they are. are. Now, wouldn't you agree with me? I could keep going. I yeah. could do if x were 3, or x is 4, or x are 10, or x are 20, or x is a million, or x is a billion, or x is a Google, or x is a negative billion, or a negative Google. Google is like one with 100 zeros, right? 
Did you know that? Yeah. Right? So, so I, it has to go on forever. So I'm not going to draw a line and stop at the two endpoints, right? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to draw a line that goes through all of those. And that's a beautiful straight line. Isn't that lovely? And then you put an arrow on the ends of each line, right? Why would I put Show the that arrows? it goes on forever. Yes, it goes on forever. So this tells you, this is a pictorial, a graphical pictorial <coughs> representation of this equation. Y equals X plus 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So, so, um, so does you guys understand how to use this? Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you one. So do I need to do any more examples? No. Let me, let's, let's. I wish I had five more minutes, and I don't, because you guys have break. Um, Thanks, Rory. All right, tell you what, I'm going to let you struggle a little bit with the backside of the homework. Oh, if it has, if it has, well, I'll just show you really fast. I'll just give you a quick little, yes. Yeah, sure, it's okay. It's all right, exactly. so watch this. What if I gave you a fraction in front of the x? So watch this. So let's say I had y is equal to... 1 half x plus 5. All right. Yes, I could go ahead and do this, x and y. And I could do 0, 1, and 2. And that's OK. It's fine. If that's how you want to do it, that's fine. This works. But if x were 0, what's 1 half times 0? Zero? Zero. Right. 0. So that becomes 0, right? Yeah. So y is equal to what? Five. 5. You see that? Yes. If x was 0, then 1 half times 0 is 0. Therefore, y is equal to 5. five. So y is 5. If x were 1, five. that would be a half plus 5. 5.5 five. Five five or 5.5. Five 5.5 five. Five five or 5.5. Five and, right? and that's OK. I can graph a half. Right? I can go over. I can go up 5 and go halfway between 5 and 6. That's OK. It works. Right? But I'm going to show you tomorrow another way to do these that is actually a little easier, where you don't have to use a fraction like a half of a point or something like that. But that's it. That's the homework is basically graphing it. Any questions? Did you have a question? Thanks, girl. Wait, wait, wait. Thanks. Hang on. Listen, Rebecca. Yes. That's it. Wait, so what's the homework? Zero, two, and four would be an easier way to wait. do this, right? What's the homework? Homework. Oh, here's this. If you did not do your, guys, listen up, please listen. If you did not do your quiz corrections, you have to have them by tomorrow. Okay. okay. The quiz we take will be on Friday. What is it? Okay, the quiz, what did Terry do? It's being recorded, bro. Uh, cool. Hi, YouTube. Oh, Gary.